What's up? It's your girl Frumpy Fit. If you don't know who I am, I'm an online weight loss coach who's dedicated to calling out all the BS in the fitness industry and providing you with accurate fitness, nutrition, and weight loss information. Today we're doing a bit of a different video. It's one that I've wanted to do for a really long time. We are reacting to my old, like really cringy, sort of toxic fitness and diet culture Instagram posts. And these are back to like 2014 when I very first started like my fitness journey. I was in school getting my degree in exercise science but hadn't like quite learned very much yet. And fitness culture on Instagram and YouTube is kind of like, it sucked me in and it was very different than it is now. It was pretty toxic. I have obviously, and you'll see, come a very long way from that time in my life and that time in my fitness journey. But I wanna give the disclaimer that this video is meant to be lighthearted and for entertainment. My experience that I had will not be the same experience that somebody else had, even if there are similarities between our stories. And the only potential like education I think that can come out of this is maybe learning from my mistakes. Okay, so that's the vibe for this video. We're just all gonna laugh at me. We're gonna have a good time, maybe learn a little bit. But first, this video is sponsored by Wait a second, every plate. My husband and I have been struggling for a while with cooking at home. We are both incredibly busy and it's even more chaotic now that he's back at school. He's in classes, he's teaching and he's trying to finish up his PhD. So the back to school season made things even worse than they were before. We were eating a lot of takeout. I had always been interested in like meal kit delivery, but I just assumed that it was gonna be super expensive. But every plate makes home cookie easy and delicious and affordable, especially compared to ordering takeout. And it's just as good. Like legitimately, the meals that we made were better than a lot of the takeout that we get sometimes. And with this extra chaotic like school season for my husband, we were able to get dinner on the table on a daily basis because of every plate. They plan, shop, and deliver everything that you need to cook a really delicious meal at a really good price. You can try every plate for $1.99 per meal, which is like probably less than your daily cup of coffee. Every plate is the most affordable one on the market. It's also worth noting that I am a bad cook. My meals are like as basic as humanly possible, but every plate keeps things basic while adding like some extra like flavor and oomph like to the meals. And it was doable for me. I managed it, we cooked it just fine. And I'll show you this one that we tried. It was like ground beef and veggies and rice and this like super yummy sauce. I was shocked at how good it was because I was the one cooking it. <laughs> it also felt so good to be able to like cook a really good meal for my husband knowing how crazy stressed he's been lately with school. And our budget tracker app is looking less terrifying. So if you'd like to get started with every plate for just $1.99 per meal, go to everyplate.com and enter the code FRUMPYFIT199. Again, you can get started with every plate for just $1.99 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code FRUMPYFIT199. Thanks every plate for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's get started on roasting me. Just to clarify, like Frumpy Fit was not around at this time. This is not on the Frumpy Fit account. This doesn't exist publicly anywhere. These are archived on my old personal account, which I will not be giving you the username to. So all of these images that you're gonna see are cropped and redacted, but don't worry, I left all the good stuff. So to set the scene for you, I'm in college, I'm studying exercise science. Well, like that's my degree and that's what ultimately my degree will be, but I'm not like in the core classes for it yet. I'm mostly doing like gen eds. And so I turn to YouTube and Instagram to learn about nutrition. Yikes. You'll see the dates at the bottom of the post and we're gonna go in chronological order and just see how I progress and flourish. So this is the first post. It is a really bad, poorly done, poor quality photo of a cup of water with a bunch of fruit in it. I do love fruit infused water. I think it's delicious. I think like I do love it. Did it need a dedicated Instagram post? Probably not. And the caption says, strawberry, lemon, and orange infused water. So good. Hashtag eat clean. Hashtag fitness. We missed the hashtag on nutrition. Hashtag healthy living. And this is April 23rd, 2013. I hadn't quite started my fitness journey yet. I was too scared to go to the gym on campus. So we're basically doing no exercise, whatever. And I'm just like starting to get into and dip my toe into clean eating and nutrition. So you'll see the hashtag eat clean on very, like almost all of these, I think. Ah, uh, cauliflower crust pizza. The caption says, what's left of our second cauliflower crust pizza? Low carb, gluten-free, and totally delicious. Hashtag healthy, hashtag nutrition, hashtag gluten-free, hashtag yum. So this is June, 2013. Listen, if you genuinely like cauliflower crust pizza, 
cool. It was delicious in its own way. It wasn't like bad, but it was absolutely not a substitute for pizza. And I remember like you couldn't even pick up the pieces because the cauliflower was so, it didn't like have enough structure to it. So you couldn't even eat it. You had to eat it with like a fork. It was really just like veggies and meat and cheese and sauce with like a cauliflower crumbly base. I definitely pretended like this was more successful than it was. And I wasn't low carb, I wasn't gluten-free, so I don't know why any of that matters. <laughs> this one is not related to fitness or nutrition at all, but I had a side shave at one point. I think it was this side. So this like chunk of my hair was shaved off and this is like one of the only photos that I have of it. Just thought you guys would enjoy that one. And I believe at this point, I had broken up with my boyfriend. So <laughs> that might give you some insight into why this happened. I almost didn't show you guys this one, but then I read the caption and I was like, yikes. <laughs> so it's just like apples and banana slices with mac nut butter that I made at home, which I still to this day absolutely love. It's so decadent and so delicious. And I am from Hawaii, so we could get like mac nuts really fresh like from the farmer's market and my mom had a food processor and i loved this but let's read the caption i've never been a fan of peanut butter true not really a fan of peanut butter i know people think that's blasphemous but so my guilty pleasure is mac nut butter why would mac nut butter be a guilty pleasure i mean it's pretty calorie dense and it's got a lot of fat in it, which my digestion doesn't even love. It's not about like calories or even fat content. It's just like my digestion doesn't love eating like a ton of fat in one sitting. It's not too common in stores, so I make it homemade. Two cups raw unsalted mac nuts and two tablespoons cold pressed coconut oil. That just adds to like the wild amount of like fat and calories in this. And this is a perfect example of something that's healthy that would not be good for weight loss because it's so calorie dense. This is the thing that was problematic. I love me some Cool Ranch Doritos as much as the next girl, but there's something to this clean eating thing. Hashtag clean eating, hashtag healthy living. And we're in May, 2014 now. This is where, like, you can tell we're escalating. We're getting a little bit worse here. We're starting to demonize some foods and we're starting to feel, feel like righteous for our food choices and like, you know, that we're choosing to eat healthy and eat clean, which is part of my problem with clean eating is like a lot of people think that they're like better than other people for their food choices. So there's something to this clean eating thing. It's a disordered relationship with food, babe. That's what it is. That's the something. Also to give you some context, I believe I'm 20 here, 20 years old. This should have been the end of my sophomore year, I think, of college. I am currently 27. I keep getting emails from Google Analytics saying that there are some people out there who are Googling how old I am. So I am 27. I'm also 5'6", in case anybody cares. This one's a bad one. And I promise we're gonna get to the fitness stuff soon because this is June 2014, which is right before I started my first bodybuilding prep, which like was my main introduction into exercise and weightlifting. So the fitness ones are coming, I promise. Anyone looking for a pasta substitute or going on a low carb diet must try these noodles. I was super skeptical at first. They even smell kind of funny coming out of the package. They smell so bad. If you've ever tried these, you know they smell disgusting. But I'm so glad I tried them. These noodles are basically just fiber and water and they come from the root of a plant. Super low calories and they absorb the flavor of whatever you add to them. Pretty sure that was a lie. In my case, it was avocado pesto and chicken. The texture reminds me of cellophane noodles, the kind you find in chicken long rice, but thinner. So I always hear people like confused about like cellophane noodles. I think some people call them glass noodles. If you've ever heard of these kind of noodles, please post in the comments and let me know. Chicken long rice is a really popular dish in Hawaii, one of my faves. And then I end this, I got them at Island Naturals, which was a local like health food store. Highly recommend. Recommend. Hashtag miracle noodle, hashtag low carb, hashtag low calorie, hashtag eat clean, hashtag shirataki pasta. Okay, listen, I did not enjoy this at all. This is another situation where I was like trying to be all like self-righteous about like liking these really healthy like food options, even though I didn't really like them that much. I did actually buy them one more time and it was more recently, it was in the last few years. And I put them in pho that I made at home they were genuinely good in the pho, enough to have that again. But as a replacement for like pasta, absolutely not. I also remember not being satisfied from this meal at all. Literally the only calories and like nutrition I'm getting from this is chicken breast, avocado, and pesto because the noodles are like basically nothing. I was so hungry after this meal. Okay, finally to the fitness stuff. So I took my very first progress photo, which is the photo you see on the left at week one on September 1st, 2014. And it's September. So how long is that? Seven years. I have been 
doing this stuff for like seven years. So it's fitting that I'm filming this in September. I also started from BeFit in September of 2018. But anyway, I do like this for the most part. This illustrates the importance of progress photos, first of all, and not relying on the scale so much. And that was like my intention with posting this also because I was like proud of myself. Today for hashtag transformation Tuesday, I would like to celebrate my progress. I still have a long way to go, but I'm so excited about what I've been able to do so far. The difference in weight here is only about two pounds. Scale weight doesn't mean much to me. Preach girl. The goal is to put on lean mass and get rid of fat mass. And that's exactly what I've been able to do. This is the beginning of a lifelong hashtag transformation for me. And then I tagged like a Instagram page that I hoped would like feature my transformation. And then I used hashtags hoping that would also get me like attention for this. Hashtag IG underscore transformations, hashtag fitness, hashtag bikini, hashtag fitspo, hashtag girls who lift, hashtag progress. So I know a lot of people can get like triggered from transformation photos. I love them and I look at that more as like this person was dedicated to achieving something and they achieved it and it kind of like can show all your hard work. Although having your body change is not the only thing that would show how hard you've worked. And it doesn't mean you didn't work hard if your body didn't change, but I do like this. This is an example of me probably not noticing how much of a difference happened, especially if I was only paying attention to scale if I didn't have side-by-side -side photos. This is also a really good example of how similar you want these to be. These were taken at the same time of day. You can see my shadows are almost identical in the background because the light is hitting me from the side and it'll be at a different point like in the sky. The one thing I will say that's like different is that my feet are closer together in the first one than the second one. So I would say at this time I had a pretty good relationship with my body. Like I wasn't doing this because I hated the way that I looked. I honestly didn't even know how I looked. Like when I took this first photo, I was like, oh, that's what my body looks like. I wasn't obsessing over it. I could go out in a bikini and not care at all or worry at all about what I looked like, what my body looked like. At this point, I was really happy that I had gained weight because in high school, I was like really, really thin and I struggled to gain weight. So at this point in time, I was like stoked because I had gained some weight. It was all fat because I wasn't exercising, but I was actually, pr I think, pretty happy with my body. But the reason I got started in bodybuilding is because as I was doing research on Instagram and YouTube about like nutrition and fitness and all those things, I came across bodybuilding and I saw all these women who competed in bikini like Amanda Latona and Ashley Kaltwasser. I was obsessed with Amanda Latona at the time. Like she was my idol. I ended up meeting her at a Olympia Expo like four years later after discovering her and all I saw was women who were like empowered AF that's what I was chasing and so empowerment doesn't look always look the same for everybody and I I wanted to see what my body was capable of like I wasn't expecting to look a certain way at the end of this bodybuilding prep I just wanted to see what I could do and so overall I think my relationship with bodybuilding and like competing was good I learned so much about myself and gained so much so much confidence from it. It's just hard to explain. I know you guys have asked for like a competition, like bodybuilding specific video, so I can talk about it more when I make that, but I don't know. This was not problematic, but you can see over the course of like the next however many posts, like we're gonna get kind of problematic. So that was basically the beginning of my prep. This is like getting towards the end of my prep. This photo, don't know what that pose is, don't ask me. So let's read the caption. Today marks exactly six weeks out for my first bikini competition. I've been training for five and a half months. This means clean eating, hard workouts, and consistency, all while going to school and working a part-time job. That's almost half a year of willpower and dedication. And I'm so proud of myself. It's Valentine's Day, and the only chocolate I've had today is the chocolate peanut butter banana protein shake I'm having right now. In a week, I turn 21, and guess what? I'm not going to drink or sway from my plan at all. Even though this is the hardest thing I've ever done, this is a lifestyle and I'm in love with it. No hashtag, surprisingly. I posted on Instagram recently, like from BeFit Instagram, a meme, which if you don't follow me on Instagram, go follow me. I make original memes that are educational and hilarious. Um, I posted one about like people feeling powerful or like better than other people for how restrictive their diet is. And that's totally what I was feeling like during this prep. I was like proud of how long I could endure restriction. Like it wouldn't have killed you to have a couple pieces of chocolate for Valentine's Day. I literally thought it would ruin all of my progress if I had some chocolate. And I was very like goody goody growing up. And so I had never even tried alcohol before I was 21. And I didn't try it for the first time until after I turned 21 and after my competition. My competition was like a month and a half after my birthday, I think. So it wasn't really like the end of the world that I wasn't gonna drink on my birthday. But I thought I was like cool for like 
sacrificing my 21st birthday. Actually, I remember what happened. My family came to visit and this guy that I was, had been off and on with for a very long time came to visit because I was going to school across the island and he like wanted to eat pizza that night and I literally sat in front of him while he ate pizza and I ate chicken salad and then probably had like a protein shake and that was it. Okay, now it's July 31st, 2015. I'm a few months out of my first competition, still incredibly lean, but actually I remember getting out of my competition. I didn't have any reverse diet or any kind of thing outside, like after my competition with my coach, it was just over. And then I could suddenly eat whatever I wanted and I didn't like binge and go crazy like a lot of competitors do and like what's kind of stereotypical with the industry like after a show. But I just remember this feeling of like not knowing what to do with myself, like how to eat, how to exercise, how to behave, how to live like after my prep, like I just felt like lost. But I just really thought that this like clean eating thing was like a lifestyle that I was like a competitor now and I was gonna get my pro card one day and it was like my whole life like became fitness and nutrition like really quickly. So anyway the caption says it's flex Friday. I was eating with my mom this morning and she told me I looked buff. I literally remember just like wanting external validation constantly that I looked buff or like muscular or lean. It's so weird. Some days I feel ripped and others I feel like a twig. Today is a buff day. Hashtag flex Friday, hashtag bed is bay. I believe this is the beginning of my tendencies toward body dysmorphia. And I've never been diagnosed, but the relationship that I have with my body and the person that I see in the mirror is so incredibly different than what I saw in the mirror when I looked at myself back then. I just remember for so long hating my body, even though it looked better than it does now. I look in the mirror now and the majority of my thoughts and I fixate way less on my flaws, but I look in the mirror now, most of the time I'm like, damn, you hot shit. And I, you know, look worse <laughs> now than I did then when I was looking at in the mirror and just like obsessing and fixating on things that probably nobody else noticed. I wanted to throw this one in really quick because I think it's pretty funny. The difference between flexing and not flexing, laugh crying face. I'm not even gonna read the hashtags. I remember exactly what happened. So this, I'm on exchange for one of my last semesters in school at NAU in Flagstaff, which is where I live now, which is pretty cool. My husband and I actually both had our very first like exchange semesters at NAU the same semester, but we never met each other. We met each other like years later which is cute. But anyway, I had gotten back from the gym and I was like, you have to get home to your dorm so that you could take a picture before your pump wears off. Like I probably did back day. And I remember like I was flexing so hard in this picture. And this was probably like the 20th take. I was so exhausted. Like I felt like my arm was gonna fall off, but I just was like, I have to, I have to capture how great my muscles look right now. And of course it's like, if you're taking that many photos, like that's not really what you look like. <laughs> you just captured like the all time best you could possibly get. But that's how I kind of knew that I was like getting way too obsessive. I mean, now looking back, like I was getting way too obsessive about my body because I would literally take like tons of photos to get the absolute best one. And actually the clip that's on the side of my head in this photo that you can see in the mirror reflection, that's putting back my side shave hair because it was like growing out and horrific. <laughs> this was before like social media could be your job. Like this was very, very just beginning. And now I feel like that's really normal for people to take like hundreds of photos to get like the best one for social media because it's their job and like, you know, blah, blah, blah. But for me, that was toxic. And the fact that I stopped doing that because I did used to post tons of photos of my body on Frumpy Fit. If you scroll back to the beginning on Instagram, it's just like photos of my body nonstop. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it just wasn't healthy for me. I wasn't in a place where that could be healthy. Healthy. I think now I am in a place where like taking some photos to like get a really good angle or like a photo that I really like. Like I posted some pictures on Instagram from my husband and I's like staycation when we went to Scottsdale a few weeks ago. And that was the first time in a really long time that I took like influencer-y kind of photos like of my body, of my outfit, like of whatever. And it was a totally different vibe than what all of this stuff was. And this is the last one. May 8th, 2016. This is from my Snapchat. The Snapchat caption says, abs and booty in one pic, this is groundbreaking. And then the caption says, I have no life. Some girl last night said, she's like 90 pounds in reference to me. I've never been more offended. Not okay. I do remember this. I was with my, my gym rat friends <laughs> out in my hometown. And in the parking lot, one of my friends was like, I'm gonna try to like shoulder press you or like squat you or whatever. 
And then this other girl who doesn't live, she was like, oh, but she's only like 90 pounds. And I was like so offended because I came from being really skinny. And like when you're a bodybuilder, it's like an insult to be called skinny. I don't know, but I took that way too serious. Also abs and booty in one pick, not groundbreaking. I don't know what you thought you were doing. So again, May 8th, 2016, I had just graduated from university. I think my relationship with food was getting better, but obviously my relationship with my body was just getting more intense and not good. I really didn't ever struggle with like any sort of issues with food that I probably should have given like my history, but I, I kind of snapped, I mean, not quickly because we see like how long of a span this was, but I was able to kind of snap out of the food thing pretty quick. But the relationship I had with my body just got worse and worse from here. And so I graduated university with my degree in exercise science. And then I kind of was like hanging around my hometown for a little bit. And then I decided I was moving to Oahu, a different island with my friend. And I got a job at 24 Hour Fitness as a personal trainer, which like messed me up in a lot of ways. I talk about this on the video where Obese to Beast interviewed me on his channel about my experience working at 24 Hour Fitness. I then, and that only lasted like six months. And then I moved to Arizona because I got an offer to work at a non-fitness related job whatsoever. I did that for like a year and a half. I went through some really hard personal times, got to a really dark place, stopped eating for a period of time, like short, lost some weight, then was using food as like a crutch, gained a bunch of weight. I got to the heaviest I had ever been. Everything else, like work was really hard. Like everything was hard. <laughs> it was a really, really dark place for me. And then I kind of like snapped out of it. I started reading like personal development books. I put in my notice at my job to quit and go and start Frumpy Fit, which is what had always been my dream. And I'm so glad I didn't start my business sooner when I was dealing with all of this stuff because I might've been putting out some really bad information that would have not been helpful, potentially hurtful for you guys. I did another bodybuilding prep, which was so much more healthy and so much more balanced than the first one. I had an incredible coach, Lacey Dunn, who I can't recommend enough if you're looking for a one-on-one -on -one coach, bodybuilding or not. I do not take clients anymore because I have my course now. If you want information about my course, you can use the link in the description and pinned in the comments. So I already was being so much more healthy and flexible with my diet, but she really helped me solidify that I could get the results I wanted while having a really healthy, th <laughs> healthy relationship with food and eating in an enjoyable way. And even over the course of From Be Fit, even though I started it in 2018, which was not too long ago, I've gotten so much better about preaching like overall wellness and health and sustainability and longevity and happiness. Did I already say happiness? That's important. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed making fun of me, seeing my journey to get to where I am now. And as usual, guys, thank you so much for your support. It means the absolute world to me. I have obviously worked long and hard to get to where I am. And I'm so grateful for everything like you guys have brought me through Frumpy Fit and the fact that I've been able to help so many of you. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe here. You can also follow me on TikTok and on Instagram. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.